So Tom, it's lovely to see you here today for Crossing Lines. Um, of course, for your fans who knew you as Jack and Hagar in Game of Thrones, how mm -hmm. would you describe your character in Crossing Lines and the show? It's a bit different. I'm not wearing a wig, for <laughs> once. And um, no, uh, my character is uh, uh, Sebastian, Sebastian Berger. He's from the Berlin Police originally, and now he works for our team, which is based in The Hague at the International Criminal Court. And it's basically a, a a special task force, a team of cops that uh, pursue criminals across borders. It's a bit like the FBI in, in the States that was founded so uh, police could go after the bad guys across state borders. And um, well, even though it doesn't exist in reality yet in Europe, um, I'm sure it certainly will at, at, at some point. Now, your character in the show is a bit of a tech genius, isn't yes, he? Yes, that required a good chair of acting <laughs> on my part. <laughs> I was going to ask you, how tech savvy are you in real life? Uh, not at all. I know where to turn the computer on and I know where to turn it off. And everything <laughs> that happens in between is a big mystery to me. So when you're having to describe stuff in the language that, that he has to use as well, how do you find that? It's, it's, it's actually it's the trickiest part of, uh, about this project because sometimes I'm, uh, I'm, I'm having tech dialogue um, uh, that I would even have difficulty, uh, difficulties understanding in German, um, let alone English. And so, uh, and I really have to learn those lines uh, and um, find out what they mean. To know what I'm talking about here. Yeah. Now, of course, you've been filming in Prague for this, haven't you? You've been mm -hmm. filming in Paris as well, in the south of France. Tell me what that was like. Well, it's 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 part of the the, the great experience on on this project is that we get to go different places, and there, there, there are definitely worse places to to spend six months of your life than in Prague and Paris. I mean, it's 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 they're great cities, and. Um, so it's especially nice when you have a day off, that you, when you're in a, in, a, in a nice city in Prague. So um, it's really beautiful. I mean, I, I, know it, I know it from when I was growing up because I grew up in, in Germany, but very close to the Czech border. So we would go to Prague all the time. And it's, it's, it's really changed. Like all, all the old buildings have been renovated. And it's, um, I mean, it's almost like if, if, if Walt Disney had invented a city, it would have been Prague. I mean, it's, so, it's almost too pretty sometimes. Anyway. Now, you've got a multinational cast for this as well, a mm -hmm. great cast, haven't you? What is, what's it like kind of fitting in with that, kind of working with different people from different places? Well, it's a really interesting experience, and that's one, one point that really got me attracted to the show, because you, you meet, as you said, you meet so many uh, different people from different countries with different backgrounds, different approaches to acting, um, so it's a very, it's like a, it's like a bit of, of, of a melting pot, our set. So, but it, it's fun, and uh, um, I mean, especially working with uh, great actors like uh, Donald Sutherland, William Fichtner. I mean, it's that's it's a really cool experience. Definitely. I mean, how do you? I mean, because I believe the second season's already in mm -hmm. production. Yeah. Um, how's how's that going? It's going well. I mean, we've we've shot two episodes, and we're doing twelve in total now. First season was 10 and we started shooting in Bulgaria and now we are back in Prague and then we'd be going to Marseille and uh, Monaco. Um, so yeah, Very nice. no complaints there. Definitely, <laughs> getting well travelled aren't you with this. Now how do you envisage your character developing in, in season two and how do you envisage the show developing as well? Uh, what, what I like about the show, I mean it's a, it, it's a, it's a crime show, uh, definitely, so we are solving, we solve cases uh, but at the same time, there's a lot of horizontal storytelling, so you find out a lot about the characters, and it's not just your um, your regular uh, police guys, heroes, uh, the good guys bringing down the bad guys. It's like uh, it's very complex characters, and uh, over the course of the season, um, the audience will find out that all of us have uh, dark sides to our characters' problems, and uh, so that's what I find very intriguing. Uh, it's what got me interested in, in the show in the first place. And also because uh, Rolla Bauer, the, the, the producer, and Ed Brunero, the showrunner, they asked us before we started shooting, they asked us for our input and they asked us uh, how we would our characters like to develop. And so that, that's good. I mean, you, as an actor, um, you actually have the 
the, the, the feeling that you're working together on, on a project. As but Normally you would just get a script and that has been approved by the network and you would shoot that script, but here you can actually give some input and develop the character. That's, that's fantastic. It makes yeah. it kind of more collaborative experience, isn't it, for you? Absolutely. Brilliant. Now, I've got to ask you for some here. I mentioned Jack in before. Your fans mm -hmm. would kill me if I didn't ask you about okay. playing Go. him in Game of Thrones. Um, what do you think about the theory that Sirio Pharrell and Jack and Hagar are one and the same person? How many minutes do we have? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know what? I haven't really thought about that. Uh, I know that the theory exists. I don't think uh, Jack and Syria are the same person, um, but uh, I haven't had the chance to, to talk to George Martin, so um, I have no idea, really. Would you like him to be, or...? Would I like Jack and to be Syria? Um, doesn't matter, does it, really? I mean, since, uh, since both characters are very unique and, uh, and very different, um, I mean, I wouldn't mind if they were the same character, but I mean, I, I just played Jack. And now, if you could change your character at will, like he can, who would you like to change into, or what would you like to change into? If you could be anybody, who would you be? Any other character? Any one character or anyone in life, yeah. Um, I think I'd like to stay Jack and come back. Yeah, well, we'd like and to be, see you back, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and be the last one on the Iron Throne. That's <laughs> <laughs> Sure. So you'd like to see Jacket on the Iron Throne? <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's. I mean, that's the natural. That that'd be the natural thing. Definitely. Well, who doesn't want to sit on the Iron Throne here at exactly. the end of the day? Definitely. How did you find it talking about yourself in the third person all the time? A man says this. A man says that. I quite like it. I mean, when I when I had to do the audition or when I did the audition, uh, I hadn't uh, I hadn't heard about Game of Thrones. Um, so I just got that that scene, and I, I looked at it, and I thought, "What? The, what is this? I mean, a guy who talks himself in the third person. I mean, um, no idea how to do that." And um, but it's then uh, I've come to uh, I've come to realize that it's like one of his like special things, and which kind of it's 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 already a very strong. <sighs> How do you say that? It's a very strong like characteristic. Characteristic. Yeah. So it, it 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 it's part of the the portrait of the, of, of the character already. So it's, it was a big help. And he's a man of mystery, isn't he? How mysterious would you say you are in real life? I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> we really just met. <laughs> <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, mystery man or not? It depends on the occasion. Oh, <laughs> that is mysterious. I'm giving you maybe an eight for that. Okay. Um, what do you think the chances are we'll see you again on the show? I have no idea. I mean, George Martin is still writing. Actually, I've got to call him. I have to, I have to talk to him. Yeah, pick up the phone after this interview, yeah. definitely. Have you watched it at all since, um, since you left? Yeah. You have? Yeah. What was your I'm red wedding date. reaction? How did you think when you saw that? Well, the thing, unfortunately, uh, I knew in a way what was coming, or that something was coming. Um, it, it, it's an amazing, it's an amazing episode, um, and um, yeah, it's, the way they filmed it, I thought was unbelievable. It was really great, and I, I, I also enjoyed all the all the videos on, on, on YouTube about people's reactions to that. Definitely. Now, um, if you could tell us what your most striking moments were in both Game of Thrones and also in Crossing Lines. Striking moments. Um, well, I think it's 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 the whole experience of, of being uh, on a big set with a multinational cast. Um, it it's just both of sh both shows are big enterprises, and it's 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 really fun to be part of that. And what are your best memories from the filming of both shows? Uh, Game of Thrones. I'd say the costume stuff, like this, uh, being able to. To, to, to live in a different century or in a, in a, in a different time period in, in a medieval setting with all the with all the extras on set and the, everybody in in, in in mail and and armor and um, so that you feel kind of beamed into a, into a different life both shows of course have got a very interesting death if your character came back on Game of Thrones and you had to die how would you like to see him go out 
I don't think I don't think Jack and could die. Mm. Could he? He could just change into someone else, couldn't he? Exactly.